Hello everyone. The title of this video is Converting from Logarithmic to Exponential Form. Now in this video I'm going to be doing examples that are taken directly from a free online textbook at openstax.org. I'm in their Algebra and Trigonometry text, section 6.3 called Logarithmic Functions, and I'm under the heading Converting from Logarithmic to Exponential Form. Now each example I do in this video will either be an example taken directly from the reading, or one of the try it problems from the reading, or one of the exercises at the end of the section that's related to this particular objective. Okay, so um, before I get into my first example here, I got some written out. I want to talk a little bit about what logarithms are. So before I get into these here, let's talk about logarithms. Now logarithms, this is a fancy word for exponents, which is also a fancy word, but logarithms are just exponents, but they just don't look like exponents. They're not in the same form that exponents are. So for example, all right, you're going to see this symbolism here. LOG, which is short for logarithm. And then underneath the logarithm, you're going to see a small number, a, a, sup, a subscript called B, or whatever. This is the base of the logarithm. And then these are logarithmic functions. So just like, you know, F of X or G of X, where you have the name of the function, and then you have an input in parentheses, these are also going to be that way, where you have the name of the function, this logarithm base b, of something. All right, so there's an input. Right, again, the parts of this. So again, this little number is called the base of the logarithm. And just like the base of an exponential function, this is going to be a positive number. Right? We're never going to we're never going to look at logarithms that have a base that's negative or a base that's zero. And then again, the word log here stands for logarithm. This is the base on the logarithm base b. And then what goes inside here is your input, just like the input of a function. Now the key, though, something you really have to remember this must be a positive number. All right. um, and I'll show you on calculators and stuff later, when you input a negative number or zero, something bad happens and they say it's undefined or not real. You don't get a real number output. So I input some value here, I'll call it x, and it's got, again, it's got to be positive. Now what, what is this equal to? Alright, well, I set it up here. Logarithms are exponents. So what logarithms are equal to are exponents. And I'll say it's equal to y, all right, out, output y, so that b, right, the base on the logarithm, base b to this exponent, to this y power, is equal to x. So I ignore this stuff. So what I have here is called logarithmic form. And then what, over, what I have over here is called exponential form. They mean the same thing. 
when you see the log base b of x equals y and b to the y power equals x, they mean the same exact thing. They say the same exact stuff. They just look different. So an example here, right, before I actually get into the problems from the book. The log, or the logarithm, say base 3 of 27. So my input's 27 into this logarithm base 3 function. Again, the output, what this is equal to, is an exponent. It's the exponent that I would need to raise this base 3 to to get 27. All right, so 3 to what power is 27? That would be the third power. And again, this is equivalent to, this means exactly the same thing as saying 3 to the third power equals 27. Right, you can go back and forth between these and they have exactly the same meaning. Um, another quick one, I'll just do a few of these quick ones. Uh, the log base 2 of 16. So again, the, the function's called logarithm base 2. My input is a positive number, 16. The output, you know, what the log is equal to, is an exponent. It's just not written in an exponent form yet. And it's the exponent you would need to raise the base 2 to in order to get 16. Well, that's 2 to the 4th power, right? 2 to the 4th power would be 16, right? So they would say that the log base 2 of 16 is 4. And once again, going back and forth here, you can change from logarithmic form to exponential form in this way. I haven't written this yet. But you take your base, raise it to the output, and that equals the input. And that's how you change from logarithmic form to the equivalent exponential form. So 2 to the fourth power, right, logs are equal to exponents, there's the exponent for equals 16, right. All right. And then one more quick one. The log, you know, base 5 of 1. Again, I have a function called the log base 5. My input is a number that's positive, right, positive 1. And then, the, again, the output is the exponent. Logs are exponents. Logs equal exponents. The output is the exponent that I'd, I would need to raise 5 to to get 1. Well, remember, anything to the 0 power is 1, so this is 0. The output is 0. Again, that, that's equivalent to saying 5 to the 0 power equals 1. They're, they're, they mean the same exact thing. They say the same exact stuff, but in different form. Right? This one on the left is called logarithmic form, and these expressions on the right are in what's called exponential form. All right. So then all we're asked to do in this, these examples in this video are what I've been showing you. Right. Write the logarithmic equations in exponential form. So for the first example here, got a couple parts to it. We have a function called logarithm base 6 of, you know, the input is a positive number, the square root of 6, equals 1 half. That's the exponent I would need to raise 6 to to get the square root of 6. Right, and once again, I'll write this. To change from logarithmic form, which I'm in right now, to exponential form, you take the base, raise it to the output, and that will equal the input. So this is equivalent to saying 6 
raised to the one-half power equals the square root of 6. And that, that's true, isn't it, right? You've seen radicals and fraction powers in previous parts of this text, previous videos of mine, hopefully. Remember, raising to the one-half power is the same as the square root. So both of these statements are true. They both say the exact same thing, just in a different way. All right, and then part two of this, you know, I have a function logarithm base three of nine equals two. And the input of the function is a positive number, positive nine. And then what it's equal to, the output, is the, the exponent that I would have to raise the base to to get the input. All right, three to the second power is nine, and that's what it looks like in exponential form. Three, the base three raised to the power two equals nine. So again, saying three squared equals nine is exactly the same as saying the log base three of nine equals two. They mean the same exact thing. Just look different, that's all. All right. And that's all I'm doing this entire video. All right, so next page, next example two, got a couple parts to this again. So again, I have a function called logarithm base 10 of 1 million equals 6, right? Because 10 to the 6th power is 1 million. And that's all. That is all we're asked to do. And again, this can go back and forth. They mean the same exact thing. Here I have a logarithm base 5 of 20, the input's 25. And, you know, that's equal to 2 because, you know, 5 to the second power. 5 to the 2 is 25. And that's all we're doing is changing this to the equivalent exponential form. And again, this goes back and forth. They mean the same thing. They are really interchangeable equations. Great. All right, so, so far, all my examples have had just numbers in them, right? A bunch of numbers and the, you know, and the word L-O-G. But L-O-G is the name of the function, right? Like f of x and g of x. It was like the f and g, right? L-O-G is the name of the function, logarithmic function. So it's not a variable, right? Don't treat L-O-G like a variable. But now here we have variables inside, right? And variables outside. Input's a variable, output's a variable. So the log base 4 of q equals m. Now again, I, I told this to you before. Q must be positive. All right, remember the input of a logarithm, this is going to be key, you have to remember this. The input of a logarithm has to be a positive number. Uh, and, but the output can be negative. Right? We haven't seen that yet, but output can be negative. Right? This, this is any real number here. Um, but remember, if the logarithm base 4 of Q is M, that means that 4 to the mth power is q. Right, that's what it would be in its, in its equivalent exponential form. And there we go. Right, this is all we're asked to do. And again, these are interchangeable, these equations. They mean the exact same thing. All right, so my next page is more of the same. So here we have a logarithmic statement, right? The log base 16 of y equals x. And once again, I'll point out that y here has to be positive, right? You don't have to write that, but I'm going to point it out just to get it in your head. You, you should, you know, that's, that's going to be very important later, especially. Again, if I want to change this to the equivalent exponential form, this is the same thing as saying 16, base 16, to the x power equals y. And that's all. 
and it changed to the equivalent exponential form. At example five, now this time, you know, the base on the logarithm is a variable, but uh, again, remember earlier, said the base has to be positive. Right? The only number that can be anything is the output. Right? You see the negative negative 11 over here. This can be anything. It's, it's the base on the log has to be positive. The input of the logarithm function has to be positive as well. And right, then I change this to its equivalent exponential form the same way I've been doing. You know, the logarithm base y of x equals negative 11 means the exact same thing as y to the negative 11 power equals x. Right? Y, you know, base to the output equals the input is how you change it to exponential form, the equivalent exponential form. All right, uh, example six, more of the same. All right, so this time I'm just going to say it instead of writing it. You know, this y here, this base on the logarithm has to be positive. Now the x here is the output. That can be anything. So I'm not going to put any restriction on that. We have the logarithm base y of 137 equals x. This means the exact same thing as y to the x power equals 137. And there's your equivalent exponential form. All right, and then on my last page, I'm doing the exact same stuff, um, but we're going to be you know, solving an equation very quickly involving logarithms. So solve for x right, by converting the logarithmic equation to exponential form. So you see in example 7, see I have the log base 3 of x equals 2, and I'm trying to figure out, you know, what, what can I replace x with, right? What's the solution to this equation? Well, you can't divide by log 3. Remember, this is not a variable. This is a function. You can't divide by log 3 and get x equals, you know, 2 divided by log 3. That, that, that makes no sense at all, all right? Do not treat these LOGs like variables. This is a function. It's like f of x or g of x and stuff like that. So in order to get at the variables inside, I need to change to the equivalent exponential form. 3 to the, this means that 3 to the second power equals x. And then what is 3 to the second power? That's 9. And there you go. There's our solution. Right. The log base 3 of 9 is 2. Right. Remember, logs are exponents. 3 to this power equals 9. That's, that's a true statement. That's pretty much what I'm doing, right, for all these examples. The log number 8. The log base 5 of x equals 2. And if I want to get x alone, I need to change form. This means the exact same thing as 5 to the second power equals x. So x must be 25. So the log base 5 of 25 is 2, right, since 5 to the second is 25. It works. Uh, example 9, another log base, you know, this is log base 2 of x equals 6. And if I want to find x, I need to change form to get it out of that logarithm. This is equivalent to saying 2 to the 6th power equals x, so x is 64. Right. The log base 2 of 64 is 6, right, since 2 to the 6th power 
is 64. That all works out. All right, and then my final example here, where again, I'm doing the same stuff I've been doing this whole video, just you know, finding the value of x at the end. The log base 18 of x equals 2. I want to find x, you know, get it out of that log, so I need to change form. This is equivalent to saying that 18 to the second power, right, or 18 squared equals x. All right, so x equals, and this would be what, 324. Yeah, 260 plus 64. Yeah. And there we go. And check it out, you know, the log base 18 of 324 would indeed be 2, because 18 to the 2 power is 324, right? That's, I go back and forth like that, and that checks out. Right, so I'm hoping this was easy enough. And in the next video, we're just going to go backwards. <laughs> you know, I'll be given a statement in exponential form and just go back and write it in logarithmic form. And that should be simple. If you know how to go from one form to the other, going backwards should be just as easy. Right. And I'm hoping that watching me go over these 10 examples here helps you out in some way when you're converting from logarithmic form to exponential form on your own. And thank you very much for watching.